Here's what happened the opening round of the 2020 FIA Motocross World Championship season. The MXGP of Great Britain and Matsley Basin. It was Tom Vial on the Rebel KTM who grabbed the first box hole shot of the season, closely followed by the 172 of Mateus Borome on the FNH Racing Kawasaki. Before the end of the lap, though, 193, Yago Kirch was making moves. He found his way past Mikkel Harup and then Conrad Muse to move himself into fourth. Thomas Olsen had a poor race, eventually coming home in 11th, just with that pass on Jeremy Sido. Then Mikkel Harup, who was showing good promise, made a mistake that allowed Jed Beaton through into third place. Talking point of the race, though, Tom Vial lost his hand off the handlebar as he cased a triple whilst leading. He couldn't get it started. Yago Kitz found a way through. Vial did rejoin the race, but a couple of laps later, lost the front end in the same corner and eventually came home in sixth place, but it was a win for Yago Kietz in race one. In MX2 race two, this time it was the other Red Bull KTM, Rene Hoffer, who held the nice tight line through the inside. They were pretty close though as they did cross it, but it was a foxhole shot for Rene Hoffer. But before he got to turn two, Yago Kietz was leading. The two KTMs were right there in second and third, although Vial got pushed back to fourth place as Ruben Fernandez went through. But then Yago Kietz made a mistake here on the exit of the turn before the end of the lap. Hoffer was through in the lead, Yago Kietz was second. And as he challenged the Austrian for the lead, this happened. He lost the front, went down, he picked himself up in ninth place. And it was a hard charge back through the field for the Montreal Yamaha rider. Maxim Renault was having a good solid ride in fourth, closely followed by Harp and Beaton. Beaton then fell as the rain fell. Kietz then found his way past Maxim Renault. And then the Battle of the Danes. Number 11, Nicol Hart went around the outside of Thomas Olsen, clearly struggling with that injury, moved him up into third. And around the same time, Vial took over the lead from Hoffer. Hoffer had led for 10 laps. Checkered flag went out, though, to Tom Vial. Hoffer came home second, Harp third, Yago Kitz fourth, and Olsen was fifth. And that meant the overall looked like this. Yago Kitz took his first career win in MX2 with the first and the fourth. Vial second and Harp third, both Kitz with his first win and Harup with his first ever podium and Yago Kitz becomes the 28th Belgian to win a British Grand Prix since 1957 and the third Yamaha win here at Matley Basin and more importantly he takes the championship leaders red plate to round two in the Netherlands in one week's time. Yeah it was a really good weekend for me the first heat um, I didn't have the best start but then I came back to second and uh, Tommy crashed so I uh, had a little gift and finished first so it was a really nice race and then uh, the second heat I had a big crash but came back to fourth so uh, I'm still it was still okay and uh, got my first overall so I'm really happy in MXGP race one the mad dash down to the first turn was as frantic as ever but it was Jeremy Siwa who grabbed the first box hole shot of the campaign closely followed by Jeremy Van Horvick, Tim Geiser, but those two came together at the bottom of the first downhill. Geiser would pick himself up and rejoin in 30th, but he was already on the charge to 13th before the end of the first official lap. Hurlings led the way. Battle for second, though, looked like this. Siwa making a bobble. Mitch Evans for Team HRC found his way around the outside of the Swiss rider to go in pursuit of Hurlings, who then started to pull clear. And a few laps later, it was Siwa who repaid the favour, got himself back in the second. De Salle took no prisoners as he nudged Colton off out of the way. Geiser then made this move on Prado. Prado found his way back past briefly, and then Geiser, in the end, had to work hard to get back past to find his way into seventh. He then fell on the final turn, challenging Koldenoff, and he lost a position. Hurlings went on to win the race from Jeremy Sewer and Mitch Evans. Kyroli into South, were your top five. GP race two, and this time it was another Yamaha, but that was the SM Action MC Miliuri rider, number 29, Henry Jacoby, who just stole it from the 222 of Cairoli and Geiser. Geiser leading before he got to the second corner. Cairoli was in a good position, so too was Hurlings. Jacoby hung on for fourth for a while, but then Siwa started to make moves, found his way past the 61 of Prado, and at the same time, Hurlings was up into second with this pass on his teammate, Cairoli. Jeremy Siwa 
made this pass on Jacoby to move into sixth place. But then late on in the race, Mitch Evans started to uh, gain ground, and so too did the 259 of Koldenhoff. See where though couldn't fend off the challenges of the gas gas rider, the standing construct gas gas rider, as he surged eventually up to sixth position with moves like this on Mitch Evans in the latter stages of the race. Tim Geiser went on to take his first race win of the year. Hurlings was second, Kai Rowley third, Paul Anatel, your top five. The overall belonged to Jeffrey Hurlings, though, his 87th Grand Prix victory. Geiser came home second with an 8 1 scorecard, and Kai Rowley with a 4 3 was third overall. Between those top three riders, 16 world titles, 200 Grand Prix wins, and 341 podiums, and Kai Rowley equals Stefan Evert's 166 podium tally. I've been studying a lot about the last championships and I just try to be consistent this year. You know, I don't, I don't even want to win every single race. And the good thing is I've already lost a motor. So, uh, but it was a good day, you know, to come out first and the second. And definitely this year the stars improved. We improved as a team and um, the bike got again better. So I'm very thankful for that. And, uh